youth, those 10 space-time dimensions of the universe that we saw in the Big Bang are absolutely mind-blowing. And what you're saying is that those were discovered by mathematical computations with taking into account the real evidence of the universe that you see, and that's the only way it all went together. True, and it also predicted a lot of things that we were puzzled over, like black holes uh, had a lot of serious anomalies that couldn't be resolved if all you had was three dimensions. With nine dimensions, everything got tied together. Also, this nine-dimensional space theory predicted the equations of special and general relativity. So if we never had that theory today, this would have produced it. So there's a lot of evidence that this has got to be right. All right, now let's bring this over into our first one. How can God hear and answer the prayers of, of billions of people that are all praying to Him at the same time? How does the science help us understand that question? Well, that comes through the theory of general relativity, the space-time theorems of general relativity, and then the theorem from uh, Borde, Vilenkin, and Guth demonstrate that there must be a causal agent beyond time that creates the universe. Now, time is that dimension or realm in which cause and effect phenomena take place. So what physicists have done in a sense is to demonstrate that the creator of the universe, at a minimum, must have access to do cause and effect operations in the equivalent of two independent dimensions of time. So for us human beings and everything else in the universe, time is linear. But for the creator of the universe, time is geometric. And with geometric time, uh, you can have a creator that can listen to six billion prayers all simultaneously uttered unto him. I don't know if this is the way that Jesus did do it, but it's a way we can prove he could have done it. And the way to look at that is to think about time as a plane, where you've got a length of time and a width of time. So, for example, we could have the timeline of our universe over here. This is time going forward in our cosmos. And you could have a moment when six billion people decide to pray to God all at the same time. But because God has access to another dimension of time, or its equivalent, he could be existing on a timeline perpendicular to ours that's infinitely long, and he can easily carve out, say, 30 minutes of individually focused time on a prayer that's taking you a few seconds to utter and do that with all the rest of the people on the planet simultaneously. I had a chance to share this with my sons when they were just three and a half years of age, and uh, they understood this and said, okay, then it really is worthwhile praying to God every night because he really can hear my prayers. What's a microsecond for us can be infinite time for him. And this is actually stated in the Bible. I mean, the psalmist talks about how a day of the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. A thousand years is like a watch in the night. What the psalmist is declaring there is that God can arbitrarily expand time or shrink time in our time context. So that's another way you can get at the answer, how can God listen to all of our prayers at the same time?